Well, hello there and welcome to another Army Showcase with Play on Tabletop. My name is Nicholas and I have with me in the studio today, Matthew Beavis. He has brought something different. Some of you may know him from his amazingly converted Grot Guard, but today he's brought with us a brand new army that he's been working really hard and we are ecstatic to show off for the first time on our channel, the Sisters of Battle. So Sisters of Battle have actually a quite long history in 40k. They do, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about the lore behind the Sisters of Battle? Uh, the lore behind the Sisters of Battle in the 41st millennium where Warhammer 40,000 is set, the Imperium of Man, um, run by the Emperor and policed by the Space Marines, Imperial Guard, Inquisition, they also have the Sisters of Battle. Now in the prehistory around the 36th millennium, there was a big internal struggle, a big uh, age of strife. I think it was the age of apostasy that had a problem. Could even be that, yeah. And there's what's called the High Lords of Terra, and they govern all the different sections of the Imperium. And the ones that govern the military and the ones that govern the um, church, basically one killed the other one off and, and um, instigated the reign of blood and just decided, you know what, that planet there, I don't like that planet, and <laughs> just sent its armies after in the name of the Emperor and in the name of his, a holy war, basically. It's all, it's all terrible to it's live in the 40, don't, don't live in the 41st millennium no. if you have the choice. <laughs> and so they made a decree that they shouldn't have any men under arms, and it was a bit of a, you know, satirical dig when they wrote the fluff, but it actually turned out to be a wonderful army to collect, which is their all female army representing the army of the Church of the Imperium of Man. Because technically, there's no men at arms. No men at arms. <laughs> so really what, really what the army boils down to is religious zealots. Yes. Uh, defenders of the, the Church of the uh, the Emperor. Um, they they have po power armor. They, they favor flamer weapons to burn the heretic and yes. purge the enemy. Yes. Um, and as you said before, they're all females. And a big theme of the army is um, faith um, and uh, purging yourself of the heretic, the mutant, and the xenon. Exactly. Yeah. Like for instance, right here, these things have always fascinated and terrified me. These are, if I remember correctly, penitent engines. That's correct. So. If you, there are two stages to the army in terms of punishment if you're seen as an enemy of the church. The first one, pendant engines in the back. The first stage is um, these are arcoflagellants, flagellants. Yeah, basically their arms have been chopped up and they've been lobotomized and they have pictures of the Emperor of Man playing constantly in their head and they just get thrown at the, uh, and, the enemy. And their hands have been replaced with like electric whips. Yes. And so they're just said, go fight the enemy and uh, redeem yourself for exactly. your heresy. Exactly. And part of the Sisters of Battle, it's their duty to witness their death in battle to forgive their sins effectively against yeah, the emperor. They're, yeah. they're doing a charity, really. They're, they're, <laughs> they're performing an act of mercy. Okay. It's a bit hard to talk about, but if you've done a really, really bad job of things, then they stick you in one of these penitent engines, which you talked about earlier. Uh, yeah, they basically just stick you uh, pretty much naked on the front of a big giant mech, and uh, you're tied down there. You're never leaving until you die. Flamethrowers and chainsaws. You can't shoot anything, and you've just got to charge forward, basically. <laughs> Now there's a further version of that called a mortify. It's pretty, pretty horrible. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> when you're painting it, like, oh, this is really bad. This is really paint? bad. Oh, what am I painting here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so only one a month is what I'm painting here. <laughs> but there's another version called a mortifier. Whereas if you're a sister of battle repentia, which we'll talk about soon, and you failed in battle, then you get stuck in one of those. But my army is themed around repentia, just doing all the all the bad things and just killing all the, the, the mutants and the heretics and everything, and they don't get put in mortifiers because they do their job. They do. The, oh, so you're you're. Guy are doing their girls, girls are doing their job <laughs> women very fair enough um, yeah so these guys have a long sword history as a model range yes. Um, yes. so uh, there was the lore of them has existed for almost since the birth of 40k but the model range uh, came in a little bit later from the birth of 40k and they had a model range that was all metal mm -hmm. and so it was very expensive to collect very and rare. very tough to collect and and because they're not they're not really an elite army they're almost a horde army because they're basically cheaper space marines in some ways they're, they're weaker space marines because they're not augmented humans they're regular humans just in power armor and so you have to have quite a few of them to have an army mm -hmm. and so it was very expensive to have I, like I remember counting one person that had I an army. I played one in a tournament. Though, yeah. So. And you spend and the whole game going, what is that? What, what is, is that? that? What and is they've that? all got amazing exactly. names, and you're like, yeah. but how does that do that? Oh, it's got the litany of such yeah. and such. Yeah. And they really, like, that, that original range, well, 
came from the 80s, maybe like early 90s of, I think the metal of GW. Was definitely lead metal. Yeah, it was definitely old metal, but not only that, but the, the style of the sculpts, well, 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 some of them were very cool. They definitely had a bit of a. Well, if you think sort of like every metal band t-shirt from the 80s with a half naked yeah. woman on it. Sort of yeah, thing. it was yeah. lots of like power armor and high heels, lots of, you know, you're wearing power armor, but you're still exposing cleavage. Um, and uh, and a bit of a bit of a kink fetish a little bit with some of the guys. It was it was a little rough at times. Um, but this new range is gorgeous. It's plastic. It's as you know, I converted my entire army. And I, that took a long time and I wanted something I could build out of the box. And because I paint for such a long time, this is about two years of painting so far, I wanted something that would last many years into the future. So you could open a box of Cadians and not sure whether it's going to be updated soon, yeah. but you open a box for the new Sisters range. Oh, it's about yeah. two years old and you know it's not going to be updated anytime soon. In fact, it's been added to. So I'm still painting stuff that I bought in 2020. And since then they've had two more updates and I'm, yeah. I've told myself I'm not going to paint any more until I've painted the last of the books. Oh, and you've done such a great job here. Like, this is amazing. So how long have you been working on this army here? Um, end of 2019 they released the special army box. And that was the first time they updated the sisters. And I bought that and uh, that came with, I think, what would be now the combat patrol, but not a rhino. Um, and I've been painting that slowly, but me being me, I'm like, well, I don't want to ruin the paint job, so I better buy some other models just to test first. So I bought the Arcoflagellants, and then I thought, well, I'll build them out of the box, but I've got to do something a bit special. Yeah. So I decided to make uh, all custom bases for them. So oh. If you see the Triumph of St. Catherine, which is this large model in the middle. It came with its own custom base, a model base for this beautiful yeah, miniature. They're, they're basically a funeral pyre yeah. of, of a, a dead saint, and they're like walking around with cherubs and... And censors. It's, it's and ridiculous. Why is that on the battlefield? <laughs> it's awesome, but ridiculous. It's, it's so it's 40K. I love it. I love it. Very, yeah. So then I took the copies of that using reverse imprints, and I started rearranging little copies using an oven baked clay. And that's what this is right here. Yep, so I've got an example of the oven baked clay that I that I made a little square of. And this is about the fourth or fifth version. From that I would take a putty silicon mold. Yep. Um, I tried pouring mold, I tried different things and it didn't really work, but the putty was good. And from there I would just pour a resin into it. And then I would stick it on a base and trim around the edge. So And that's why you have amazing custom bases that all match the, the triumph of Saint Catherine. Right. Um, and they look Great, man. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the whole army came out because it's with the Sisters of Army Battle, there are so many different units. It's kind of hard to paint it to look the same. So the main theme is oh, red and green. I know the green is a bit too subtle, but it's just the edges of the base. Um, again, complementary colors. You know what? I didn't notice that before, but that's amazing. So when I first, there's no airbrushing, it's just Citadel and mixture of Vallejo other colors, and I'll just do a bright, a word bearer's red and I think it's Elysian Drop Troop Green or something like that, and it just looks like a little Christmas tree, and from then I'll just build up the colors, build up the wash. Uh, and as we talked about, I have three kids, a very busy life, so it's sort of an hour at a time. So this That's is pretty right. much an hour at a time over two years. Yeah. Uh, the Triumph took about a month, so a week alone for the cherubs. Oh, you, you, like it, it shows the time you put in Thank there, you. for Jeez. sure. Yeah, and the other thing I did was when I painted up enough, it started as a hobby project, and then the, there was a podcast I listened to, which is the Sister Act 40K podcast. Oh, so it's a dedicated podcast to, to Sister to Act. Sister. Yeah. And they started as sort of a bit of tongue in cheek, and all their friends yeah. are like, oh, what are you going to do? Talk about them for an episode and then run out of things. But they're on to 30 or 40 episodes by now. So they're talking about like modeling, tactics modeling, maybe. Tactics, everything. They'll invite um, people who won tournaments on to chat about it. And they have their own Patreon, and this is one of the pins. So as well as being a pa Patreon of you guys, I'm a Patreon of Sister well, Thank Act. you very much. We appreciate that. So I like to support them, and pretty much I'll paint and listen to their podcast. And now that I, I'm driving to work since I moved house, and I'm listening to their podcast, and I'm like, you know what? I can make an army out of this. And then here we are. So I've got a lot of plans for the army moving forward. Um, there's one squad of jump, jump troops. I've got another couple to be painting up, and then they've got a beautiful tank called the Exorcist. Yes, which that is a pipe beautiful. organ on the back of a tank that fires rockets. Fires rockets from the pipe, and if I'm not mistaken, he, uh, the, the person she fires them playing. by playing <laughs> the pipe organ. It's so dumb, but so awesome. So I'm rewarding myself once we have filmed here today with breaking open that box and painting that. Oh, that's so good. So like, how? So this is obviously not everything you have. It's just everything you've completed. So everything far. I've completed so far. Yeah, and we've got what about 1,500 points here. 1,500 points. I've got a couple more things that I've. Uh, built and started painting on. 
Um, but my mantra is don't open it from the box unless you're going to build it and don't build it unless you're going to paint it. Now, I like that. So I I've got a half painted unit, I've got an assembled Rhino and I've got a new inbox Exorcist. And if I go home and I think, oh, I'm just going to do some Sisters of Battle, oh, I might build Exorcist. No, you've got to paint these first. So and very early on, I, I made this shirt with some of my favorite models. Like you actually just made that shirt yeah, yourself? I took a photo of some models and I printed it off. That's and great. I'll put it on at bedtime, I'll brush my teeth, I'm like, yeah, I should go paint some Sisters of Battle. And I... So you made yourself a t-shirt to remind yourself to paint? paint exactly. That's yeah. so good. You know, some people might just put like a sticky note or something like that. No, well, it's no. too tempting when you tie it, oh, I'll just go to bed. But even there's one color, you know, like I said, put some red on the model, put some black on the model. You get to a certain point and the next night you'll do the wash, the night after that you'll do things. And it's actually really, really, really helped me to keep painting because we're looking at the shirt and that's pretty just cool. one, one paint at a time is all it needs. So you're a big proponent of like a regular rhythm of painting to get stuff done. Exactly. I sort of there's a thing called a slow food movement where you're not sort of rushing to the restaurant, not not waiting and you know, oh, I gotta get going and eat yeah. everything. This is a slow painting movement. That's nice. And it shows because you've put a lot of love. Like we've we've had your army on before for the Grot Guard. Yeah. And that was a lovingly converted Imperial Guard army. Everything was grots. So green skins. Um, it's a lot of fun. It, it's a lot of fun. A we lot had, more silly than yeah. the theme of this army. Yeah, that's true. Say. You went yeah. much more serious. Yes. Um, you can go check the, the army showcase and the two battles that you played with us now on yeah. the channel. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, they were great games. Yeah. I love both of them. We got to play one actually. Yes. And so great. later, we're actually today we're gonna record record after recording this we're gonna record a battle and this is gonna be the first battle of the sisters of battle on our channel and we're so excited and that's why you've brought 1500 normally we love to do army showcases with larger collections and stuff like this but this was just too enticing not to show you guys because they are just lovingly painted and uh you always do a great job thank you thank you it's an absolute pleasure to be here i'm very excited to see how they go in the battle all right so walk me through what you've painted here and what your army is here so let's go over here so what are these these are these are seraphim seraphim so they wield they two pistols angels. yes they wield two pistols, so they're flying everywhere, shooting all the people. They've got hand flamers as well. Wait, they've got two pistols and a hand flamer? Oh, they've got two hand flamers, two, two little tiny pistol hand flamer. That's so awesome. Yeah, they're really good fun. They've got some awesome rules as well. 12 inch or 6 inch? Like short range or long range? 12. 12. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. they got more strength as well because they got faith in the Emperor. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. And everything's flamers, right? Yeah. yeah. And then over here, it looks like we got a squad here. And that's a squad, a Battle Sister squad. That's built from the main box that you can buy off the shelf. Um, you can see there's a simulacrum, so there's a little tiny piece of a saint inside a little box. It's a relic. Yeah, a relic. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then in front is a dialogus, so she sings hymns. She's got a little inspire. pulpit in front of her. She's yeah. like singing, She's got singing loud hymns. hymns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then next to those are the first squad of Repentia, and you, Repentia yeah. are sisters of battle who either they're colleagues or they think that they've done something wrong or they've not killed enough heretics, or spilled some holy water, or something like that. So they put themselves in the repentance squads. They can, squads. they pretty much can. Yeah, they're like, I, I failed the emperor, I'm going to redeem myself by... Throwing away my gun, taking off my armor, or, and taking a big chainsaw to everybody, yep. Sounds reasonable. Yep. <laughs> so if they, I guess if they kill enough people, they can go back to the squad. But in actual case, one of them, Celestine here, she's in gold. She's what's known as the living saint. She used to be a repenter. So she, you can sort of move through the ranks, so to speak, yeah, yeah. of repentahood. Uh, and she's got two, uh, they're called Gemini next to her. They used to be actually in the law, two different canonesses, which is the leader of the army, but now they're sort of representations of others in battle. So they could fall in battle and then raise up with her. Basically. This is one of the first models they introduced of a yes. new Sisters line. Yes, and, and it was very difficult yeah. to assemble. After building all the new models, you're going back and like, what are they doing? There's like a left knee and a right elbow connected to the one bit of sprue. It's probably my favorite one. And it was it was the one model I was like, maybe I should do a Sisters Army? But uh, I didn't end up... That was the reward. The, the, as I say, I, I paint with rewards. So the reward to getting to 1,000 points was the Triumph of St. Catherine. Yeah. And the reward to getting to 1,500 points, which is where we are now, is the Celestine. Because it's cool? it's a large point value, so you're like, oh, I'm at 1,300 points. I could be at 1,500 if I paint one more model. You know? so <laughs> it's what works out well for me. And this looks like some sort of, like... Uh, yeah, so faster? we alluded to earlier in the days, it was a bit sort of, in the 80s and yeah. 90s, it was a bit sort of metal. And so she basically whips the repentia forward to remind them of their duty to absolve their <laughs> transgressions to the Emperor. It, do you think? I don't think they do. Not in the Bloody Rose. The sub-faction is the Bloody Rose and they yeah. just basically want to kill everything. So they're the Blood Angels with of, of the Sisters of Battle, if I can put yeah, it Yeah, yeah. In front of her is the Canoness. In front of her is the Canoness. Now she is the spiritual leader and physical leader of the whole army. So she's from the special edition box that's now become the Combat Patrol. Yeah. And what's unique about her from a 
army-wide point of view is that she's quite old. So she's got an older face. That was a good challenge to paint. Yes, here. Yeah, so you think about anything that fights in the 41st millennium is probably going to die off very quickly. So yeah, she's got have... wrinkles and everything. Yeah, yeah, so I had a lot of fun painting her. And she's got a prosthetic leg as well, so she's seen some things. So most people oh, paint. Right. Yeah, most people paint it metal. I'd want to like, oh, but a bit more red because she has so much cloth on her. So a lot of the army is about balancing the colors out. I think you've done a great job balancing the colors out. Yeah. There's so much detail on these. It's good fun. It's really good fun. If you really want to start as a hobby project, just pick up a squad and uh, have fun just trying out cloth because it's good. You know, it's also good for contrast as well. Yep. Um, such as a battle, because there's no many flat areas, you can just paint with contrast, paint the robes with contrast, bit of face with contrast. Yeah. And this over here, another Repentia squad. That's right, yep. Uh, they also shave their heads, so I had a lot of fun stippling the hair to make it look like it's been shaved a bit. <laughs> so some of them have a little bit of hair, hair remaining. Yeah. That's awesome. So again, there's so many different ways to paint the different models. Yeah. And from uh, Blackstone Fortress, which is a standalone game, yeah. there was a priest model at the front there. Now, this is a guy. Yes, the only guy in the whole army, unless you count the, the, uh, the form arc, guys formerly known as. The, the convicts. Exactly, the convicts, yeah. 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 So he's uh, a little bit of a dig representation at what the church could be now. He's sort of a bit overweight and has a bit yeah. of a, yeah. a nasal feeding tube, as has been pointed out to me. So the whole thing's meant to be big satire, basically. Yeah, it yeah, is very, very satirical. Everything turned up to 11. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's everything went wrong with every religion ever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and he's basically saying, read my book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's too pious to hold a gun, so he's got a little servo skeleton to, to hold a gun for him. <laughs> he's got a big mace, for, you know, cracking skull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this, what's this right here? Uh, she's a Order of the Hospitaller, so there are lots of names thrown around with the Sisters of Battle. Sisters of Battle, Adaptus Sorota. The Adaptus Sorota covers the whole Sisters of Battle. The Sisters of Battle themselves are the Order of Militant, and she's not from the Order of Militant, she's from the Order of Hospitaller. So she holds a book, and praise over someone who needs help on the battlefield. And she's got wonderful dove models there as well. Which I love. Look at the writing on there. How did you do that writing? Uh, a very Well, it is a small brush, but you want to make sure you have a large body to the brush to hold the paint. Because otherwise it dries out, you get halfway through the scripture and dries out, you need more paint. So. Oh, that's the trick. I've tried, tried that. I was like, well, yeah. I need a tiny yeah. brush, but I guess I need a bigger brush with a good point. That's right. That's right. And so a lot of, you'll notice that none of the army have any helmets on them. So a big challenge for me, having painted green skins for 20 years, was A, to learn to paint skin tones, and yeah. B, to try faces. Because you can sort of, you know, have a funny face with a with a green skin and paint some blood on the teeth, and away you go. You've got eyeballs. Yes, everything has eyeballs. And eyeliner? Uh, I tried a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I that's had, incredible. I had a lot of fun with them. It's really good faces. I, I haven't been able to do my face as well. I, I feel like I've kind of practice. failed at that. I need it's more practice. practice. That's yeah. 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 So the whole idea was to paint a whole army full of faces, and yeah. just by the end of it, hopefully have done a reasonable job. And I think I have learned to do that. So. And then we got some pentadent engines. Yep. The aforementioned guys trapped to a, a vehicle with yes. big chain axes. Yes. Chain sword, chain saw blades, big heavy flamers, and flamers. Yep. 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 Lots of shackles. Another sister battle squad. Yes. Another. That's a different. Simulacrum. So Different kind of relic. Relic inside there. One more Repentia. Yes. A sneaky friend behind of yours. He's not there. <laughs> He's coming later. Okay. And uh, another one more battle squad? Or no, this is something That's different. heavy weapon squad. They're called the Retributus. Ooh. So... Is that melters? That's heavy heavy melters and multi-melters and heavy bolters. And they have little cherubs to reload for. Oh, yeah. And again, she's reading a book, of course. Yeah. And yelling out for it. So... <laughs> Everyone's reading a book in the battle, you know. Is it kind of like the Holy Hand Grenade I think instructions? So. I think like... so. Well, in the game they have miracle dice, so that's another fun thing yeah. to in the game. And basically, I think of them, you know, they'll just read from a book and fire, and it hits somebody, you know. Because so. they're, they're really all about faith. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They, um, how how do you feel they play? You've played a number of games with them now. I played a few practice games. I really, really like it. Um, a lot of my problem with the Grot Guard is a bit of an older codex, but yeah. it would stand there and fire in lanes and sort of move the trips up to protect the tanks. And I just wanted to charge forward, and it wasn't really fun. I think you remember in our game, I was charged forward and you wrapped me onto the objective, yep. wiped me off, and I lost yep. it. Yep. 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 yep, So I'm looking forward to doing the same to you. <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to face my Gene Sterling Cults, That's the right. new Gene Sterling Cults, That's with the right. new codex that I haven't been able to play on the channel yet. And I'm excited to see how they fare up against this, and we'll come eat you. <laughs> 
The Xenos must be purged. You recently moved. Yes. But before that, I think from what I understand, you actually lived in a fairly small place. It was two bedroom, but we had three kids, uh, preschool kids. Yeah. So everything had to be put away, and that's part of the reason it was one model at a time painted. And so no dedicated hobby space, for instance. So you actually, he brought this into the studio, and I want to bring this up because it's just so cool. So he built his own kind of paint area, paint box. Yeah, so this is what would be called, uh, it's for humidifying cigars, a humidor or something like that. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, so I bought this at a yard sale for $10. Uh, and I put all that, I don't do airbrush, I don't do, I do rattle can outside yep. uh, and everything. And then Hard to do airbrush with kids and not a space to paint. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it's a little it, bit wobbly, but basically I set it up so that I just open the lid and I take out the top and I got a little, oops, it easy. You, you've made making your hobby space part of your hobby. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. So again, more inspirational stuff to look at at the front. I'm not sure if that'll show. And then inside just some paints and brushes and things like that. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so is that like on your lap or on a table? Or on, a like table. Yeah. on a table, yeah. And if yeah. you know a kid happens to wander out of bed, you just shut it and go help him out and then open it up again. What do your kids uh, think about your model collection so far and daddy's hobby? Um, they just call it, is that your model's dad? Because they also see the t-shirt. Yeah. Um, they really, really like the grot guard. Yeah. They're like, look at the guy running the other guy and then one of them tries to play with the tanks and things like that. They're not so sure about these. However, my daughter was sort of having breakfast one day looking at my t-shirt and he's like, she said, are they all girls, Dad? I'm like, yeah, she's like, oh, that's good. That's cool! So that's really that's cool. something she identifies with. I yeah. mean, I don't have any of the too much scarier stuff on there, yeah. but uh, yeah, they really like it. They haven't yet moved to asking and seeing painting and stuff like that. Yeah. Are, are you hoping to like bring them in? Or, like, you ever want to like, so. put a I think paintbrush so. in their hand? And I just, think like, so. I've got one, one um, regular friend, Harry, who I game with, and yeah. they know I go and game with Harry, and I said, oh, today Dad's going to go game. Oh, say hi to Harry for us. I'm like, no, it's with Nick. And they're like, Nick? I'm like, yeah, from the video. Oh, the video! Yeah. Oh, they watch yeah. the videos? Oh, that's yeah, yeah. so cool. So, uh, yeah, like I've, I've been, uh, I actually have models bought yeah. specifically for my kids when they get older, if yes. they want to. And I just like, I mean, just, just like, why do I give it to them? What do, I want to give it to them now. But I, to, to ease them into it, I actually went to the dollar store, bought a bunch of really cheap paintbrushes, yes. and got Army Men. Yes. And so uh, I gave them like the plastic Army Men. I spent like five dollars total yep. and some cheap acrylic paint from the dollar store as well, and and gave them a little palette and. We've got a little basement area yeah. now, so I'm hoping to just splash some paint around with them. But I, in the very far distant future, I did buy a sort of set of Titanicus because I think that's going to be oh, an awesome, like cool. when they're in their teenage years, yeah. it's a nice sort of standalone game. Yeah. Because 40K can be a bit difficult to keep up with over the years from a game perspective. It can. So yeah. many re-releases, but I feel something like that would be really good to... Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great entrance way into just wargaming in general. Yeah, yeah and this this, this tabletop hobby that we love. And now that we've nerded out about being dads and 40K dads, that's cool. We're going to be 40K yeah, dads. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've had people say that you are the uh, the Flanders of 40K. The Ned Flan yeah, that works. Oh, what do you think about that title? Well, all my colleagues love the sweaters I wear, so. That's great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've also had Harry Potter and really? a few other okay. things like I'll that. Take that. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard some people call me the Mr. Rogers of 40K. Yeah, Mr. Rogers and Ned Flanders, that I'll works. I'll take that. So, yeah, that so works. Yeah. From, from Mr. Rogers of 40K and Ned Flanders of 40K. <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, we want to wish you happy wargaming. And um, you want to do a call out with me? Yeah, let's do it. Until we see you next time, play, play on. on. That was really good. That was fun.